Thank you so much, Paul. Hello, everyone. I'm Surat, and thank you so much for tuning in this week's Gen AI Weekly Learning Lab. We'll be today talking about turning imaginations into compelling stories. All right, I'm Surat Kolimurla. I'm an experienced designer and video producer. Some of my work have been featured on Forbes, NBC Boston, NECN TV, and Samsung VR. And I also got the opportunity to speak at TEDx Boston on how AI can simplify video production. And all the links to the videos that I'll be talking about in the upcoming slides and resources, I will share at the end of the presentation. So please stay tuned. So let's get started, text to video. All right, so as Paul was saying, you guys have ex already experienced text to text, text to image, there's text to music, text to video. What is going on in text to video? Basically transforming your text prompts into video using AI technology. On the right, you can see a video that I generated. This is my living room. My living room is getting flooded with water. To do something like this in visual effects, it's gonna take me forever, I'll have to learn some complicated fluid dynamic uh, softwares, but don't worry, I'll show you how to do this in a second. But let's just see what are the applications for text to video and what are some benefits? You can create some marketing content, you can create educational content, you can do some really cool storytelling. And what are the benefits of this technology? Now, everyone since has access to this technology, it makes it very easy for anyone to generate these cool videos. And you can easily convert your concepts into videos and you can iterate with you know, with different prompts and see different ideas, you know, instantly. All right. So I want to show you what the current tech is, where it is at the moment, what we can create. So I created a, like a one minute video and I want to share it with you guys. And then we're going to unpack a little bit. What are the small pieces, some small details that went into this video? So let me go ahead and play this video for you guys. You're heading to the Mariana Trench. We've detected some kind of opening. Your mission is simple. Go there, see what's happening, and return immediately. We thought we knew everything until we found it. This wasn't on any map. What the hell is this? Where are we? This isn't space. It's been waiting for us all along. All right, hope the audio came out clearly and you guys were able to experience it. As you saw, it was like a Hollywood style trailer. We're gonna get into it. And before I get into the nitty gritties, I just wanna point out a few, three things that have advanced a lot from the time text to video was like, you know, launched to the public. If you noticed in the trailer that I showed, there were consistent characters. So we generated a character and we created this character in different settings. That was pretty complicated to do before. Now it's very easy. And as you saw, there was this second character. And if you notice, there was a section in the beginning of the trailer where we used this feature from Runway. It's called Lip Sync, where you make the still image talk by syncing its mouth moments to a voiceover that you upload. So let me just play it back that specific clip. Dr. Vasquez, Captain Green. You're heading to the Mariana Trench. We've detected some kind of opening. Your mission is simple. Go there, see what's happening, and return immediately. All right. And I just want to point out one more thing. All the tech that I'm showing you now is going to get obsolete at the end of the presentation because it's always advancing at a really fast pace. That's the beauty of this. And you may ask, hey, how much time and money did it take me to create that trailer that I showed you earlier. Can anyone take a guess how much time and money it took me? <laughs> I think they're feeling set up, Surat. All right, no worries. I, I see there's a couple of chat responses, but- uh, 30 me... minutes, three hours, yeah. All right, let me go ahead and reveal it. All right, it took me four hours 
because I went a little bit crazy. As you saw, I did this cool title animation. I went into music and all, but you could do it much faster and cost me around $60. There are, of course, free alternatives. We're going to talk about that at the end of the presentation. For this specific example, I use Midjourney, Runway, ML, and Envato. What are all those tools? Don't worry, we'll get into that later. All right, if you're interested for that specific video, the whole workflow, how I set it up, if you're interested, I have a detailed video related to that. I'll also share that at the end of this presentation. Before we jump into the exact nitty gritties, let's just compare how AI generated content is different from traditional video production. Usually there are three stages in video production. Pre-production, where you're doing script writing, brainstorming, developing characters. And then you have production where you're going and actually shooting the content, whether it's live action, or maybe you're creating animations on a 3D software. And then once you have your content, the final stage is called post-production. This is where you do the editing, add sound effects, background music, and voiceover. And let's see how generative AI is transforming these stages of video production. Well, everybody is pretty much aware of these tools, ChatGPT and Claude. You can use them for script writing, brainstorming, and character description. On the example you see on the right is a screenshot of the script that I generated for my trailer. So everybody has access to this tool and they can easily use these tools for the pre-production phase. Let's move on to production, which is the most interesting part. Now, we have, there are a couple of tools, but I wanna highlight Runway and Luma AI where you can upload an image or just write a text prompt and generate images. We're gonna get into that in a second. We'll get into a demo related to that. And moving on to product push production, there are some amazing tools like Eleven Labs, as we've seen in the trailer that I showed. There are a couple of voiceovers and dialogues just with text prompts. You can generate professional sounding voiceovers. And there are other tools like Suno where you can generate background music. All right, this is the most exciting part of the presentation. Let's jump into a quick demo of Runway ML. All right, first go to runwayml.com and we'll go ahead and log in. All right, this is how your once you log in, this is how the dashboard looks like. We're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show like two examples. And so you get a good idea of how Runway ML works. So you'll have to be subscribed to a plan because currently the free version of Runway ML is pretty limited and it, it doesn't really work properly. So once let's say you are on a standard plan, that's like $10 a month, you can cancel it anytime unless you subscribe to the annual plan. So you go ahead and click generate videos. And I'm gonna show you an, a cool example. Now I took a video clip from my iPhone of Charles River from uh, Waltham area. So, okay, this clip looks nice. Now I wanna make this clip more interesting. Maybe I wanna make, I wanna make like a Godzilla movie or something. All right, so what I'm gonna do is, so I took a, took a screenshot of the, of the first frame because we don't need the whole clip. I'm gonna go ahead and upload my image right over here. All right, great. And here you see there's a tab, it says first and last. What does that mean is, does this frame, uh, the animation should happen from this frame or if you click last, whatever, before this frames, it calculates, it generates the frames before it arrives this frame. So let me explain what that means. So for example, uh, let's see what we wanna do. Maybe I wanna get some like sea creature come from that river, all right? We're gonna be a little bit ambitious. We're gonna create a, like a Hollywood style movie. So I wanna get a sea creature come from that river. So first, I want this to be the first frame because after this, the sea creature should come. All right, so we said, okay, this is the first frame. So I'm gonna copy a prompt that I already wrote it. So here is a section where we're gonna describe the shot, what should happen here. So I'm writing here, start with a calm river scene. In the next frame, a massive realistic sea creature emerges from the water towering above. All right, before I click generate, is everyone with me? Everyone uh, understanding, am I going too fast? Everything good? The questions? All right. All right, this is the fun part because we're doing this live. I don't know how this is gonna come out. So I'm gonna select five seconds. The reason I'm selecting is because I'm running out of credits. So I don't wanna, <laughs> <laughs> so let me show you how the credits work here. So you see here, I have 975 credits. So let me just open this. 
So I can generate 195 seconds with Gen 3 Alpha model. And if Gen 3 Alpha is like the newest, more happening, like, you know, more deep, like an advanced model for with that, I can only generate 97 seconds. So let's check. Okay. I'm on the Gen 3 Alpha Turbo. So that's great. So I can generate 195 seconds out of that. I'm already generating five seconds. All right. Once we have our image, we have our prompt and I'll get into this. What is all this here in a bit? And there's another thing I just want to touch on. If you click on settings, there are some additional things you can add here, whether you want it in vertical format or horizontal format. Uh, there'll be more settings once if you move to the Gen 3 Alpha model, but let's not worry about that. So we'll go ahead and generate. Uh, let's see what it comes up with. The beauty of this, it just takes a couple of seconds. As you can see, it's pretty fast. <laughs> let's see what it comes up with. The great drama, right? Yes, it's more even I don't know what it's gonna come up. With, so <laughs> I hope it comes up with something interesting. All right, uh, are you ready? I'm gonna hit the play button. So we see the first frame. All right, great. Let's see what it came up with. Okay, that doesn't look that great. So we're gonna go refine the prompt a little bit. Start with the, in the next frame a massive. It's a realistic problem with sea creature emerges from the water. Maybe I'll remove this and let's try generate. And as you know, with any generative AI tool, it's a lot of trial and error. You're going to keep tweaking the prompt. You may not get it in the first attempt, maybe in a couple other attempts. That was the same situation when I was working on my trailer. It, I just didn't get it in the one attempt, but uh, that's how the workflow is going to be like. And also I'll show you a couple of generations that I did in the past. So we're not sitting here and wasting time and writing prompts. So let's see how this one came up. All right, that's getting a little bit better. So I can go further and keep tweaking the prompt, but you get the idea here, what's going on. Any questions before I move on to the next demo? No, sir, I just want to highlight though, look how short your prompt was. And then a video, it's got water dripping off the monster. The monster's head's going higher. Right. It's, 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 it's assumed a bunch of right. for the monster and realistic activity around it. Got it. And if you notice, it also, if you notice, there's like a water ripple happening. There's a lot of details that I didn't even mention. So, and of course, this tech is just going to keep getting better and better. You can still feel that it is computer generated, like it doesn't feel like a beautiful visual effects shot, but it's definitely getting there. You're gonna play around with the prompt a little bit. You can make it come out really beautiful, but you get the point here. Now I wanna show you a demo where, let's say I have a, you know, artistic image, <coughs> this artistic image to life. Let's see how that's gonna look like. Let me go ahead and get rid of this. All right. All right, so maybe I want this to be the last frame since we previous example we did first frame. Let's see what does it mean. All right, so let me just get rid of this prompt. Maybe let's use a couple of uh, examples here. Maybe what's happening here. Here in the bottom, there are a couple of um, predefined prompts for a specific camera angle, whether it's a handheld macro cinematography. Uh, let's do like a orbiting scenery. Okay, and maybe I'll say we orbit around the submarine since there is a submarine in this photo in the style of, let's say like cinematic. All right, I'm gonna again change it to five seconds so we don't use much of credit. So we'll go ahead and click generate. So in the previous example, we use first as the selection in this last, so it's gonna calculate the previous frames to get to this frame. So let's see how it comes up with. All right, let's hit the play button and see. So as you can see, even though I didn't explain much in the prompt, what's happening, it's trying to just 
understand how it gets to that specific point. It's adding some additional details. But if you feel like, hey, I don't want it to, I don't want to see the sparks, you can, of course, go into the prompt and fine tune it. I just want to show a couple of examples that I already pre-generated in the past so you can get an idea of how, how the results are. Rod, this is great. You're doing a good job. Great. Thank you. Uh, all right. So one of the, I just want to show the specific shot that you already saw in the trailer here. If you notice my prompt is so concise, deeply observing what's happening. It's so amazing, amazing from an image like this, it's able to calculate the other angle, how the face is going to look like because generating angle of a face from different angles is pretty complicated. So I feel it's doing a really good job. All right. So Rob, before you go on, that guy looks familiar. Do you, you know? <laughs> have you yeah. seen him before? <laughs> yes, he looks really familiar. Maybe an older version of me. <laughs> All right. And I just want to say one more thing. If for more inspiration, there's a tab called Runway Watch. You can go here and you can see all the professional, like, you know, award-winning generations done through this tool. So you can see and get some inspiration and see the potential of the software. All right, let's move on, move on to our presentation. All right, let's talk about some industry trends. What's happening with the text to video in like commercial space? So four months ago, there was a really cool music video launched by this artist called Washdot. Their whole music is generated with OpenAI Sora. Of course, Sora is not available to the public yet, but some of the some of the creative people have access to it. This is a really great example to see, you know. Hollywood and, you know, commercial media is, you know, uh, getting, seeing the potential of AI. And I've, I've been noticed recently on September 18, there was a news. Runway is partnering with Lionsgate. Lionsgate is a big Hollywood production company. That is just to show that Lionsgate is able to identify, you know, there's a big potential with the AI. It may, it may not replace the whole uh, production, but it definitely add value, especially in a lot of other like visual effects or something. So this is a really cool trend to see that big production companies, you know, partnering with Runway ML. Well, it all looks magical, but I also want to highlight a couple of challenges using generative AI, especially related to text to video. As I mentioned earlier, the prompts is more of like a trial and error. So sometimes it may take some time to get the desired output. And currently AI complements the workflow. It doesn't replace the traditional process yet. And the most important thing is licensing and copyright, especially if you're working with free open source AI generating tools, you need to understand on what kind of data it's been trained on and whatever it generates, can you use it for commercial purposes? So we should always read the licensing and copyright information if you want to use any AI generated content on your commercial projects. I want to just highlight what Adobe is doing with their especially Firefly model. So Adobe has introduced Firefly contributor bonus. So it compensates Adobe stock contributor. Adobe stock is not the stock exchange stock. It's the footage library that they sell where users can download licensed stock footages, images, any 3D assets. So what Adobe is doing is they created their Firefly model trained on their stock library and they are trying to figure out how to compensate whoever submitted the stock footage because whenever you generate an image or video, it's coming from one of those styles of those data that they have. So they're trying to figure out how to pay. So it's good to see some companies trying to figure out how to compensate artists. Unlike a couple other companies where artists work has been without used used without their permission and the AI generated image or video has the artist style in it. So it's a great way to see what some companies are doing to ensure uh, artists are compensated. And as I promised, I wanna share all the learning. So the next steps I wanna show what you can do exactly right after this presentation. I curated a couple of content here. Feel free to take screenshot of this slide, scan this QR code that will open a PDF. Let me just walk you through how you can use this PDF. Here I outlined four next steps that you can do right after this uh, learning lab session where you can uh, expedite your process in generative videos with text to video. 
I would recommend watch this four videos that will give you a brief idea on like, you know, what text to videos, how you can get started. And I've listed down a couple of options. If you're not, if you want to go with runway ML, maybe you want to try something free. There's Luma. Maybe you want to see something, a different option. There's Pika. And I also want to share there's text to image tool. There's text to music, text to voice that you can use to create a compelling video with uh, video, music, and a voiceover. And there are a couple of editing tools that I want to share with you, two free options and one paid option. And I also want to share a couple of three inspirational videos that are generated using text to video, which I felt were really compelling in terms of storytelling. So I think by following these four steps, you can definitely kickstart your journey in text to video. And that will definitely put you in a trajectory on like how you can keep advancing in this new skill set. And I really hope you guys enjoyed this uh, talk and had some key takeaways from it. Fantastic work, Surat. So what, what questions do folks have for Surat? I know this is not a shy group. Oh, and a question here now that you raised up about the copyright issues for commercial projects. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, I know very well that if I write a novel using this big pen, I have the copyright for the novel because just I paid for, for the pen. In this case, a little more complex. You have you definitely have copyright for the prompt, and the tool was the one that actually created the prompt. So, in at least uh, which way, uh, uh, who actually has a copyright here? Is the AI has more copyright because it did more suicide, or is it whoever writes the prompt that has a copyright? That's a fantastic question, and each company has a very different way to say who owns the content. If you see Runway Emma's licensing, I don't remember on top of the head, but uh, for Adobe is how Adobe made their uh, licensing is whatever image you generate, you own it and it's licensed. You can use it for commercial purposes. You are anyways paying a fee to Adobe, like it's a subscription fee or whatever it is that's included, especially if it's an enterprise plan. So you need to ensure what plan you're on and if that's covered. And based on the image that you download, they have kind of a mechanism to see what are the art is being generated from which source has it been used and they try to compensate that specific artist. That's how it works with Adobe. Coming to Runway ML, we may have to check to see, as you said, since the prompt is written by the user, so that's your original creativity. And But the data, we don't know where it's being trained on, it's licensed or public data, whatever it is. In the end, is this belongs to you or is this belong to Runway ML? That is something we should definitely check the licensing and copyright and every tools have different licensing copyright, so I encourage you to check it out. And that's why I always encourage not to, if you're doing open source or free tools, don't use it for commercial purposes, it's good for learning. So always better to uh, work with a tool like Adobe or Runway ML where you're paying, so they already have their licensing and copyright in place. And, and Sarad, if I, my understanding is that Adobe in particular has really gone, bent over to be creator friendly and this, you know, legally, they're going to have legally legal tools that are they want to be in the tools business. They want to be supplying data that doesn't have infringement on it and be very creative friendly. Not everyone's taking that approach, but is correct. that said correctly? OK, that is correct. But some people are a little bit upset with the, the new thing Adobe did with their update where it's actually tra training on your content as well. If you're designing something, it's also there is a way you can opt out to it. But it's automatically not, uh, it's automatically opted in. So you'll have to figure out how to opt out. So there are several other softwares like uh, where you have to like, you know, carefully check any AS tool that you're using is your data, whatever you're doing is being used for that. Same thing, how you have a chat GPT, you have memory feature memory on, or is your data being, so you'll have to just, Ensure, read everything. If you're concerned that I don't want this, just check if there's an option to opt out of that. I'd probably just uh, read their terms and conditions and put on some AI and ask, is this okay to use for commercial use? And sort of using an AI attorney analysis. Okay, so, so definitely I would recommend to see their enterprise licensing agreements. And of course, if you're still not clear, I would definitely work with a legal attorney, especially let's say you're working on, you're making your own Hollywood movie and you're, it's going to be extremely commercial. In those scenarios, you definitely need, need to be involved with legal team. So that would be a good 
people. And, and throw out one quick thing before we go to Alexander's here. We're hearing really good things about the newest model 01 from mm -hmm. OpenAI. So you put that legal agreement or the terms and conditions into 01, ask <laughs> to analyze, even though we'll read all those pages here. Right. It'll, really it'll good summarize things. it and explain you in the simplest terms. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead, Alexander. Yeah, great presentation. Um, I just had two questions. I was just wondering, I don't know if you said it in your presentation, but what was, what, what's been your longest film that you've created? And then also, I know you talked about in the presentation about lip syncing, but like, have you been able to like, get that better? Because that's what I, me personally, when I like create like small like videos, it's like the lip syncing is kind of off. Um, uh, personally, I created a one minute video but I can create more. It's just that I don't have enough credits. So it's it depends on credits. If you have more credits, you can, length is not an issue anymore now. That's the beauty. You can create yeah. 10 second long video. You can create five second long video. I'm sure that uh, duration will keep increasing as the tools get, keep getting better. And coming back to the lip sync, right now, the example that I show where it is at the moment, I'm sure that's going to improve. And the only way... I, in my experience, to get the lip sync better is ensure in your image there's only one character facing. There are not multiple characters. And try to trick it in such a way, if you notice in the trailer, when the person is speaking, I'm like zooming in like that. So that adds a little bit like a dynamism to feel like, oh, even though if the lip sync is not accurate or looks every, only the lips are moving, everything is still, that might not be a good way to like trick the audience that it is actually talking. So there are some tricks you can use, traditional video tricks you can use to make it, make this lip sync effect more better. That's great. Go ahead, Liz. Thanks. Yeah. Hi. I Thanks, um, Surat, for the great presentation. Um, I wanted to make a couple points because was literally in the heat of this exact same topic. Um, you know, a couple things to watch out for. One is making sure that your data you know, the data part of what it's getting trained on. So when you use Runway and you're putting your data in, if it trains on other people's data, then you run into copyright problems, IP issues with that other person. That's what happened with Under Armour. When I was doing a little investigation, they had a director that um, they worked with. They did another new commercial that trained or used the model based on that guy. And they ended up in a big legal, you know, quarrel. So it's, real this stuff that you're talking about um so the model trains on other people's stuff who owns that still very much a big gray area be careful and even more warning is with when you use a celebrity or even a, a spokesperson or any model in it so literally just got introduced to a new company which i hope will end up being a um, learning lab uh example it's called makery and they are in the process of trying to sign up models, also AI avatars that are legally cleared. So anyone on the site you use is already through the legal system and they're already giving approval and they're getting compensated for all their work. So if they're used in a video or if they're used in a pho photograph that you don't have to worry about it because this is a huge issue. So it's fun to train on. It's fun to make these videos, not so fun to get sued later. Yeah. And the <laughs> and these big companies that are, and big companies making big mistakes, Under Armour's not a little startup, right? And they made a huge error and they're in the middle of it. And this is like sweeping through the creative, um, you know, kind of landscape. So just know that when you do these things, if you're putting them out there, make sure they're internal, make sure that you're using them. But if you're going to use them for commercial use, this is not a joke and it will catch up to you. And if you don't know if your model was, you know, proprietary or your, where your data came from, or if you're using a celebrity or talent, it's, you know, it's, I'm just, you know, we all know this. It's just saying that it's real. These things are in the middle of it. There are companies trying to come up with solutions. Like I told you, I just met a startup that is working on this issue to become the Getty of, you know, using models for this so that you can use them and know people are getting paid and it's legit. But it's just um, it's just reality that we're in. Yeah, those are some definitely great points, Liz. Uh, thank you for sharing that. And I just remember there's a company called Synthesia, where it generates yes. like avatars. Yep, I have used them. Yeah. Yes, that that's one a good uh, thing that they did because they already licensed. There are like a couple of avatars. They need, they're, they're done. Like so, in other words, they produced them, and if you want to use them, you right. can use. Them. But that's the kind of thing there are companies getting smarter at this, but 
other big companies that have gotten burned and it's all part of this learn, right. you know, lab and learn, you know, Paul, as we always talk about, it's like they're dipping in and then they're finding out whoop, there's a risk with that. But yeah, I use them as well just recently. And um, it was interesting. So, um, but this is a really good demo and um, appreciate it. It's just kind of a warning to folks because you get caught up in these tools. And then if you actually do want to commercialize it, that's when you get in trouble. Correct. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's do, let's do one more question for Sarah, then we'll go to open uh, open mic. Now, who else got another question for him? Go ahead, Sharon. Okay. I would like to create videos of myself and kind of scale my time. Um, is that easy to do? Where I've got an image of myself, you know, standing, and then I can write texts and scripts for videos. Yes, that's a great use case. And yes, you can do that. There are a couple of tools you can use. One tool is HeyGen, where you can upload a video of you, a little train on that, and you can just text to video. You can keep changing the script. So you don't, you don't have, if you make a mistake in the script, you don't have to re-record yourself. You can use, keep changing the text and it'll automatically do that. So I would recommend you to check out HeyGen, where you can upload. And again, definitely look into how your data will be used if you're going to upload to create your own digital avatar, I would highly recommend you to read all the legal terms, but there's a way to do that, yes. Fantastic, thank you. Go ahead, Lucinda, we'll do one more and then open mic. Yeah, quick question. Uh, just, uh, you talked about the consistency of images, because that's been one of the things I've really struggled with, uh, you know, for images. Uh, how hard was it to do that? Did you have to load pictures of the same thing at different angles? Just a couple comments on like how tricky is it to get the consistency? Well, I feel right now the tech is just keep getting better and better. In my experience, it was pretty easy. So I'll tell you my workflow at a high level, but in the, in the PDF that I attach here, there is a section generating consistent characters that will give you more detailed information. So we've okay. That's fine. But I'll give you at a high level how I did it is. First, I generate an image. Once I'm satisfied, this is a character. I want this character to appear in different situations. So right click on the character and copy the link. And in mid journey, there's a feature called as character reference. So I'll, I'll, let's say I generated a, a, let's say a scientist woman. So I, I again write a scientist woman sitting in a submarine hyphen hyphen syrup and I paste the link of that original character video. So it references that character and generate okay. Okay, a scientific, uh, you know, sci a female scientist. Okay, so that's that image. Oh, what's the situation in a submarine setting? Okay, then it understands and it creates it. The other tricky thing that I was trying to figure out, but I did a workaround, putting two, if you have two or three characters that need to come in the same shot in a multiple different scenarios, that's the most trickiest thing right now. There's a way to do that, but it's just, pretty tricky, but what would happen in this tech is where the UI will become so simple. You generate a character, three characters, and you rename them. This is, for example, this character is Lucinda, this character is uh, Paul, this character is Surat. And next time when I'm writing the prompt, Surat sitting on a bench and Paul buying an ice cream, Lu Lucinda biking across the river. So you understand who is Lucina, who is Sarath, who is Paul, and, and it creates. I think that's where it's going to head to. But right now, if you want to have three, four characters appear at the same scene in a different action, different setting, that is a little bit complicated. But one character or two characters is still doable with some tricks. Uh, that's where the tech is right now. Great. Thank you. Sarath, just a fantastic job. So thank you. What uh, oh, Big wow. kudos. Uh, really, um, this is the second time uh, Sarath's presented, and both times have just been spectacular. Uh, the, his video will be on uh, YouTube in the next uh, day here or so. And uh, Sarat, I want to at least uh, commend you as well for teaching me that you do a QR code to a PDF with more links. I have not seen that. And that's a really nice. I've seen a lot of QR codes that LinkedIn URLs or web pages. And that's a nice way to get communicate information to audience. So really, uh, really nice job. Great. Thank you so much. Before I stop sharing, everybody got this link QR code. Am I good to stop sharing? Yeah, yeah, thank you. All right, awesome. Thank you so much.